mapapansin nyo ba na parang sobrang daming may acne ngayon? And I'm not just talking about teenagers, even adults with acne, even yung mga tao na never nagkaroon ng acne before, biglang ngayon meron na. Well today, we're gonna be talking about acne. But not just the acne that's hormonal or caused by oily skin, but we're gonna go a little deeper into diet, stress, urban living, overuse of products, and following skincare trends na akala natin makakabuti sa acne, yun pala mas makaka sa mapa. So let's break the myths, go down to the science, and help you understand. Why is acne so common now, especially in the Philippines? Hello everyone! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Gail. And whether it's about dermatology or sharing a piece of my personal world, I'm here to bring authenticity and knowledge straight to you. This episode is very close to home. Acne. And not just the acute pimples, but also chronic recurrent acne, inflammatory cysts, and yung mga kahit paulit-ulit mo nang ginagamot, eh hindi pa rin siya tuluyang gumagaling. Let's break everything down para hindi na kayo malito sa dami ng information available online. So bakit nga ba ang daming may pimples ngayon? Actually, there are a lot of factors. Number one is the environment. So yung mga exposed sa EDSA, sa C5, even ako here in Makati, uh, because I walk to work, so we're exposed to pollution, dust, dirt, which causes oxidation of your sebum. So kung oily skin ka na to begin with, it makes your skin more pro-inflammatory, causing breakouts. Pangalawa is digital stress. I know everyone is guilty of this. We're always on our phones, on our gadgets, trying to be present, trying to check everything that's going on in the world. But this can lead to increase in cortisol, which can indirectly cause acne. How does it happen? Pag mataas yung cortisol natin, it also increases our hormones. Pag mataas yung hormones natin, we have more oil production, which can lead to clogged pores, comedones, and inflammation. Ang ending, acne. So parang tama din pala yung sinasabi ng mga ibang mga magulang sa kids nila, no? Kaya ka nagkaka-acne, sa ka cellphone mo yan. Kasi nga, it increases your cortisol. And not to mention, stress which causes immune dysregulation. So, syempre, pag hindi in full force and kung disrupted yung immune system natin, it causes more inflammation and slower healing. Pangatlo yung dietary habits natin. And guys, I'm also guilty of this kasi it's so easy to reach out to the next available food out there. Mahilig tayo sa mga processed foods, those that contain complex carbs and sugar, yung mga milk, Tea, yung mga fried food, yung mga instant instant because some of them actually cause an increase in your insulin growth factor 1 which causes stimulation of your oil glands and more inflammation leading to worsening of your acne. And mas common ito dun sa mga adults na merong acne kasi I guess because of our lifestyles, mas prone tayo na magkaroon ng dietary shifts. And yung pang-apat is skin misinformation and skincare product misuse. So ito, sobrang common ito, pero surprisingly, not a lot of people realize na nagagawa pala nila to. Alam mo yung mga nakikita natin ng mga trends sa paggamit ng mga combination of products and ingredients na patong-patong. And even if you have oily skin, pag pinagsabay-sabay mo talaga silang lahat, there's really a risk of compromising your barrier, making your skin more irritated, making you more prone to acne. In fact, just recently, I've had a few patients na yung trigger ng pagkakaroon nilang acne is trying out new products and ingredients na nakita nila online. May mga nag-share pa sa akin ng patients na they started using vitamin C, HA, BHA, tapos yung nakita nila sa TikTok na meron palang azelaic acid na pwede, then sinabayan pa nilang retinoids, all in one skin routine. So parang, minsan guys, we also have to consider our skin and what we can tolerate even if we have oily skin. And lastly, hormonal imbalance but not due to our reproductive organs but rather due to lifestyle. What am I talking about? What can disrupt our hormones? Siyempre, lack of sleep minsan. Diba? And yung sinabi ko na kanina, yung diet. And of course, yung stress din natin. All of them, you know, when combined together can really disrupt our system and can cause overstimulation of our oil glands, increased inflammation, etc., etc., leading to acne or worsening of already existing acne. And most especially in women, it can worsen PCOS-related acne, which is also quite related to insulin-resistance-related acne. But to be honest, guys, hanggang ngayon, 
marami pa rin talaga who believe that acne is due to clogged pores or yung quote-unquote, maduming mukha. Di ba yung mga magulang natin sinasabi sa atin dati, o kaya ka nagka-acne kasi hindi ka nagihilamos. But let me give you the real score. There are actually four pathophysiologic processes involved in acne formation. And it all starts in the sebaceous glands. So pinakauna is sebaceous glands overactivity. Because of the influence of our hormones, yung oil glands natin, they produce more oil than needed or more oil than usual. And because of this, nagkakaroon tayo ng number two, hyperkeratinization. So, dapat nagpapalit tayo ng balat regularly, but because of overproduction of oil, it becomes sticky na yung mga skin cells natin, imbis na siya shed, nagpapatong-patong sila, becoming blackheads and whiteheads. And number three is overgrowth of the cutibacterium acnes, which is oil-loving and comedone-loving. So, kapag oily yung skin natin and marami tayong blackheads and whiteheads, it provides an environment for your C. acnes bacteria to proliferate. And this, in turn, triggers number four, which is an inflammatory reaction from our skin. So, andyan yung mga release ng mga cytokines and other things that lead to that acne lesion. Pero guys, meron tayong slightly new information that I think maybe some of you already know. Number five, which is the disruption in the skin microbiome. So yung balat natin, think of it as a place where a lot of the microbes live harmoniously together. But certain situations like excessive oil production, etc., causes an imbalance. So pag dumadami si, si acnes bacteria, ang nangyayari, no overpower niya yung mga ibang microbes and it causes a disruption. And this is actually something that can cause acne exacerbation or worsening of other skin conditions apart from acne. And it doesn't stop there. Hindi lahat ng acne lesions pare-pares ang itsura. Meron mga taong may comedonal acne o yung puro blackheads and whiteheads or majority of their lesions are blackheads and whiteheads. And meron tayong inflammatory type wherein yung mga lesions sila, alam mo yung mga malalaki, mapula, tos maraming nana. We also have those who have a mixed type, kumbaga meron silang combination ng dalawang types. And then finally, we have the hormonal acne type. So usually, yung hormonal acne, you would often find it on the jawline area. It's not exclusive, but a lot of patients who are experiencing hormonal acne would usually find it in these areas. So bakit natin pinag-uusapan ito? It's because the treatment of acne differs depending on the severity. So when patients come to my clinic, usually I categorize them under mild, moderate, or severe acne. Why? Kasi pag mild lang, usually what you see over the counter sa mga drugstores, pwede na yan. But once you cross over to moderate or severe, kailangan mo na talaga ng dedicated anti-acne medications and sometimes even the oral form. Ngayon ito medyo napapansin ko lately ha? and it's a little bit alarming for me. Why does it seem like acne is getting worse and worse in the Philippines? So, pag-usapan natin yung mga local realities. Unang-una, ito, number one. May naisip akong formula dito. Di ba in the Philippines, it's hot and humid. Hot and humid equals sebum party. O di ba, nagpa-party yung mga oil glands natin. Tapos, dagdagan mo pa ng exposure to pollution, naglagay ka na napakakapal na sunscreen, naglagay ka ng makeup. All of that can lead to clogged pores and especially if you're acne-prone, acne lesions. Number two, let's admit it, the Philippines is not the cleanest country in the world. So there's a lot of pollution going on. And pollution triggers oxidative stress. And because of this, this leads to more inflammation, making acne harder to treat and slower to heal. Number three, yung common skincare myths na hindi pa rin talaga mamatay-matay. Hagay ng paglagay ng toothpaste sa acne lesions. Meron pa rin ako nakikita ganyan. O yung mga paniniwala na dahil sa init, nagkakaroon ka ng acne. Dahil hindi ka naligo, nagkakaroon ka ng acne. So we really have to correct these myths and address acne appropriately. Number four, admittedly, hindi talaga lahat may access to experts in skin. Hindi lahat nakapag-consult sa dermatologist to get the proper medications for acne. And as a consequence, they reach out to yung mga what's available, like yung mga rejuvenating sets na parang promising to give you good skin, brighter skin, which can sometimes maybe work in the beginning, but actually later on can lead to worse consequences and worsening of your acne. 
And lastly, ito, medyo na-realize ko lang to when we did a deeper dive into acne. Widespread use of steroid-based whitening sets. Pero ito kasi mga steroid-based whitening sets na to, hindi naman parate disclosed na meron siyang steroids. So we know that steroids are anti-inflammatory. So in the beginning, patients might experience relief from their acne or yung nababawasan yung pagkaswollen o pagkamaga ng mga acne nila sa una. But later on can lead to what we call steroid acne or yung acne na ang nangyayari pag tuloy-tuloy at prolonged ka gumagamit ng mga steroid and this is actually very hard to treat. Kaya dapat mag-ingat talaga tayo because I know it's very very tempting sometimes. So kaya kailangan mag-ingat tayo guys because we have been told na in certain areas may mga nagbebenta ng mga Skincare products labeled anti-acne sa mga bangketa, ganyan, promising to give you clear skin without disclosing what's in them. So, minsan they contain products like mercury, steroids that are very, very harmful to the skin when used inappropriately. Ito, um, some of my colleagues and I have been noticing lately na parang may mga cases ng acne na medyo mas mahirap na siyang itreat ngayon kesa dati. And I've... Tried to analyze it and I've, I've actually um, broken it down to three main reasons. No? Number one would be antibiotic resistance due to misuse of antibiotics. So nagugulat ako guys na parang may pupunta sa akin ng mga pasyente na one year, two years na silang naka-clindamycin toner. Two to three years na sila nagpapahid ng erythromycin creams. These are ingredients that we use for acne but it's not meant to be used for long periods of time. Kasi... Pag ginawa mo yon, nagiging barkada na sila nung si Acnes bacteria. And di ba, when you've been together for so long, you become familiar with that person. Parang ganun. So, hindi na siya gagana. And to add to that, I think it's also because of the availability of these products everywhere. Anytime pwede kang bumili ng mga toner with antibiotics. So, parang nangyayari dun guys, if these ingredients stop working on you, what if you get an infection na kailangan mo talaga treat using these ingredients? Baka hindi na siya mag-work. So, that's really something that we have to address. Second is skin barrier disruption. Again, because of information available everywhere and easily accessible products. Nakakatempt din talaga mag-try ng mag ng mga produkto na hindi natin alam nakakasama na pala siya sa skin. If you've watched my videos before on skin barrier, it's very, very important to keep our skin barrier intact kasi not only does it protect our skin from the environment, it also maintains a good and healthy environment for our skin to thrive. And yung pinakahuli is delay in seeking treatment. Ito talaga, guys, ang dami kong mga patients na na-encounter na they've been doing DIY treatments for years before sila mag-decide mag-consult. And naiintindihan ko naman kasi, like I said, yung iba, lack of access. Pero kung alam mo naman na may paraan ka na mag-consult, I really, really encourage that you do so. Kasi there are a lot of very, very effective treatments na pwede mong gawin. Kasi pag pinatagal mo talaga yung acne mo, what can happen? Scarring. This is irreversible and actually, frankly, very much harder to treat than acne itself. Second, Chronic you inflammation, so tuloy-tuloy lang siya, patong-patong, paulit-ulit na acne. And this can affect your self-esteem and real mental health issues. Which leads me to my last point. What needs to be changed? Ano ba talaga yung kailangan natin baguhin? Number one, stop guessing. When it comes to skin issues, consult na yung expert, yung talagang may experience. Kasi mali mo, it's not even acne. It could be folliculitis, it could be rosacea, or it could be something totally different. And by trying and doing your own treatment, you can actually make it worse. Second, treat your acne holistically. Hindi lang enough that you're applying skincare products. Remember, there are a lot of triggers around us. The environment, your habits, etc. Even your diet. So, kailangan titingnan natin siya, iti treat natin siya as a whole. Tandaan, no cream can fix bad habits. Number three, stick to your skincare routine. Kung ano advice namin, sundin naman natin. Kasi, no matter how good your product is, if you don't actually use it or apply it, it's not going work. Okay? Consistency yields results. And normally, we advise our patients to commit to a skincare routine na anti-acne for at least three months before you really see the effects. Number four, understand what your skin needs. I will say this again. You are not your favorite influencer. Iba yung balat mo sa ina-idol mo na skincare influencer. So, important na 
personalize lahat ng treatments mo and lahat ng mga ginagamit mong produkto. And lastly, to my fellow practitioners. Ito, I'm sure some of you already know this, but I just felt like I wanted to share. We have to evolve. Kasi iba na ngayon eh. Um, kung dati, very dekahon yung pag-treat ng acne. There are so many factors to consider now. Our patients' preferences, their habits, their lifestyle. And ito lagi ko sinasabi sa mga residente ko. Please familiarize yourselves with the products available out there because our patients will still want to continue to use your favorite moisturizers. And we have to learn how to tailor our patients' skincare products with the medications that we want to recommend. But of course, kaya nga importante na alamin mo yung mga products available out there kasi minsan talaga... Hindi siya yung, it's not gonna work. At least kung alam mo, di mas ma-explain mo sa kanila and then you can recommend your own products na tingin mo mas mag-work. And you know what I've developed through the years is the art of listening. Admittedly, at the start of my practice, um, minsan ako lang talaga yung nagsasalita. Parang diniliktahan ko yung pasyente ko ano yung gagamitin without really consulting them, what they like, what they prefer, what their habits are. And I found it very, very helpful in terms of product compliance and alam mo yun, parang I guess holistic approach to treatment is having an open communication with my patients. And isa pa kasi, parang all the more, acne now is a multidisciplinary concern. And I always used to argue about this with um, some of my friends kasi tingin ko talaga, acne is not merely aesthetic. It's really a medical condition that has to be addressed right away, right now, and appropriately. To summarize, Acne is more common now, not because our skin changed, but because our habits, our lifestyle, stress levels, all of that have drastically changed. Acne is not anymore just part of growing up, but it's actually a medical condition and something that anyone can deal with regardless of age and gender. So if you or any of your friends or loved ones are tired of trial and error skincare, maybe it's time to stop guessing and start understanding. So if you like this video or if you find it helpful, please don't forget to tag anyone that you think needs it. And please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss the next Durham Talk episode. So, I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.